Welcome to another episode of Harriet's Florida Kitchen. I'm Harriet, this is my kitchen, and here we are in Florida, and it is hot, hot, hot. But no problem, because we're not cooking in the days of old in Florida. We're cooking in today's world, and we have AC. So it's only about 107 heat index outside here in the beginning of September. Now today, we are going to make something from, yes, some of my fan mail. I know you can't believe I have any fan mail, but I have a little bit. And we have this particular recipe is from viewer demand, mainly from my good friend, Virginia, with whom I served on the hospitality committee at our church in London called All Hallows Barking by the Tower. Now, I know you don't need me to tell you that this is one of London's oldest churches. It was built in 675 by Ethelburga, the abbess of Barking, so that she would have a church in London to travel to. And it was called All Hallows Barking until the Parvenu Romans came along and built the Tower of London. So they changed 400 years later. So they changed the name to All Hallows Barking by the Tower. And it worked out so well for us to have a woman at the head of the church, Ethelburga, that 1300 years later, we picked another one, Catherine, the marvelous vicar who is there now. Now, not, nothing of that has anything to do with today's recipe, except that Virginia and I were on the hospitality committee and we served this wonderful recipe, which is chocolate bread pudding, many times at parish lunches. For one thing, it's really easy to make. And for another, it's really easy to multiply. It only has, what, like seven, se well, actually, I think I'm adding a few ingredients, but it is about seven ingredients. But it's not from anything from London. It's from the Nashville Seasons Cookbook, which is a great cookbook and one of my favorites. And so today I am going to, and oh, oh, and I'm wearing a wonderful new apron, which I want you to admire. Let me see if I can turn it down so you can see it. My great friend Elisa gave it to me for my birthday, and it has a painting from one of my, one of my favorite painters, Soroya, a wonderful Spanish painter, on my apron. So I will now get started, and I'm going to do something really amazing today, maybe hard, is I'm going to actually film what I do, and then I'm going to do a voiceover. So if it seems a little wonky, it's because it probably is. First thing we do is get the chocolate into the pan. So naturally, I'm using the usual Baker's unsweetened chocolate that I love so much. This calls for two ounces for this recipe, but I'm doubling the recipe because I'm going to make one for tonight, which we're going to serve warm, and another one I'm going to make right now that I can then chill and take to a couple of friends. So I'm using Baker's chocolate. I put four ounces for the double recipe into this little saucepan, and now I'm going to just slowly heat it up while I do some other things. Kind of a good idea to keep stirring it a little bit. Mm, either put it on really low heat, or if you want to do it a little faster, put it on higher heat, but do keep on stirring it. Good idea. While the chocolate is heating up on one of the burners, you can start working on the, on the milk. Now the milk has to be scalded, not boiled. That means that you put it, you, you bring it to almost a boil. It should, it may even have a skin on the top. It may start to just do that little kind of fizzy bubbling on the top, but that's when you know to take it off because it's definitely hot enough it's scalded. You can also microwave it um, and not bring it to a boil and that will scald it just as well. But you know my bad experiences with putting hot things in the microwave. So I'm not as keen on that as I used to be. Anyway, I've just put in um, I put in two, um, two cups. This recipe calls for two cups of milk. So because we're doubling it, I put in four cups of milk. And now we're waiting for this to just come up to heat to scald. I put it on, uh, I put it on medium high heat. That should be fine. But I am, and I'm, I'm keeping an eye on it. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to start on some other things. Uh, I'm also going to stir the chocolate just a little bit more because. Um, both of these things are going on in the stove at the same time. Do not let it burn. I put this on a higher heat because I was kind of in a hurry. So it's, it could have gone badly pear-shaped, but fortunately it did not. And now it's going to be very nice and melty. I'm going to put it on the back of the stove. And it's going to be ready for when we need to use it. Next thing we do is we take a loaf of bread and this calls for four to five slices. I'm using five slices per recipe. That means I'm using 10 slices 
and you cut the crust off and cut it into cubes. Now, this call, the recipe calls for homemade using homemade bread. I was not in the humor in order to have the time to make the homemade bread today, but I did go to Publix and get some very nice bakery um, sandwich bread, which is fine. But you can go fancier. You can do. Uh, you can use brioche. You, I probably wouldn't use something like a Cuban bread or something that's quite as, um, you know, like a, like a French bread, maybe. But you certainly can. It's not going to hurt it. Um, I guess I wouldn't bother. You know, it's just so good without it. When, and you'll see what I mean. But cut it up. Cut it up into the cubes. And then I'll be ready. Oh, by the way, my, I went, went to Weight Watchers today. And they said, well, you know, you could just use the bread that has only 45 calories in it. And that'll turn it into a Weight Watchers dish. Well, <laughs> I wasn't in the mood for a Weight Watchers dish tonight, so not what I'm doing. I'm just using the regular old bread, and I think it's going to be divine. Okay, get all those together. You just put them off to the side. It'll be fine. I actually don't have a plan of what to do with the crust. I probably should be cutting them up, freezing them, putting them in, you know, putting them in the freezer, getting ready for using them for stuffing or something for Thanksgiving, or... I should be using the crusts, toasting them, putting them in a Caesar salad or something. Anyway, I'm not. I don't have a plan for tonight. Just letting you know if you, as you see those sitting there. Now we go over and we check the we check the the milk, and you can see that it's beginning to bubble on the outsides, just around the edge. That's a perfect sign that it is scalding nicely. So next, we're going to put that aside. We put the chocolate aside. We're going to butter the casseroles. Now, I am not doing that. I'm not. I'm not doing a single recipe, as you know. I'm doing a double one. So I'm putting this in. You could do a double one, and you could put it into a big casserole dish, a big sort of long um, rectangular one. It would be great. I've done that. It's delicious because this recipe supposedly serves only four people. <laughs> Believe me, it could serve one really because it's so good. So if you want to put it into a big casserole, that'll be fine. You'll just have to change the cooking times. You'll probably have to check it at 45 minutes and may even take up to an hour to do it all together. But I'm doing two separate ones, and so you can use the regular cooking time, which is 30 minutes. But we will check that when we do it. So I'm buttering these pans, and that's all I'm doing, just buttering and making sure you get all the way around because it will rise some. So then we're going to put the bread in, evenly distributed into both of these containers. We're just going to evenly spread it out, and we're going to put it in there. And I hope that both of these are under the camera. Yes, they are. Okay, so the bread goes in. You don't do one other thing to it. You just put the bread in. Next, we're going to pour, we're going to pour the milk over the bread. And we're just going to make sure we're going to sort of stir it up. And then we're going to we're going to stir it up, make sure it's blended really well. Then we're going to put the chocolate in. The chocolate goes in. We're going to evenly distribute that. And it doesn't really, it's not crucial that it completely blends. Sometimes you do, you have the sort of a sort of, sort of stripy look, and that's okay. But you do get it blended as well as you possibly can. Now, I don't like to cook sweet things. I don't have a teeny bit of, sh of salt in them because I just think it enhances the flavor just a bit. So I put just a pinch in each. Um, and I also don't, I put a pinch in each, in each of these things, and not even a, a, a pinch is, I don't know, a quarter of a teaspoon or something, not much. And I also don't like to do things with chocolate without a little bit of vanilla. So that's the next thing we're going to put in. Stir it all up, get it all together. Vanilla goes in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in four eggs. And in a true Tampa piratical motion, we're going to just throw those shells over our shoulders. I have a friend named Ben, and he said that's he thought that would be a great addition to the next episode. So here they go. Shells over the shoulder. They're aiming for the garbage can. I think they're actually just making it into the sink. So then we're going to add, we have four eggs. We have two eggs for the recipe, so we're doubling the recipe. That's four eggs. Then we're going to take a half a cup per recipe of sugar. We're going to add, so a cup into this, and spread it out and even it out. Pour it in. And then we're going to whip the eggs up. We're going to whip the eggs and the sugar, and now we're going to make sure that they 
mix up perfectly, the sugar and the eggs. Then, and this is a tricky part, you need to make sure, remember that stuff is hot. You have poured hot, hot milk and hot chocolate into that bread. And if you pour the eggs in and you don't keep whipping and stirring as you do it, you will have sort of a poached egg or an omelet in the middle of your chocolate bread pudding, which would be kind of kind of creepola. So stir it up super well, super fast. As soon as you get it in there, pour it in, stir it up. And if you get it stirred in really well, you will not have a problem with it turning into you know, scrambled eggs, chocolate bread pudding. Okay, now time to put both of these babies in the oven. Okay, you know the drill. We're gonna check it out. We're gonna make sure that we can, we've, we've got it. My cake tester. We're gonna see if it looks like it's done. And I don't know. Let's see. It looks like it's a little bit. Hmm. Yeah. That looks pretty great. No, I'm not happy with that. I'm gonna put it in. I'm going, to put it in, I'm going to put it in for another 10 minutes or so. No, that looks really nice. Okay, that's that looks about right to me. That looks perfect. I am going to let that set for... Oh, I'm going to let it sit for about 20 minutes before I take a sample of it just for you. But really... I would let it sit. It would be good for it to sit. I've, I've had it fresh out of the oven after dinner, and it is, um, it's just too hot. It doesn't have the flavor that you want. So if you let it sit for as long as 30 minutes or even an hour, even though it's warm, still warm, um, it just will con, con, sort of solidify a little bit more, and you'll have the, I don't know, just the flavor is just better. You just taste the chocolate better if it's not too hot. And then, of course, you can put cream or whipped cream or ice cream with it, which is quite delicious. Okay, we're going to sample it shortly. Okay, I think it's going to be okay. So this is what it, well, let's see, this is what it looks like. I'll show you because I've just taken some out. Looks pretty wonderful. And let's see, proof is in the pudding. Literally, this is a pudding. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It is really, 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 really good. Here's what's great is that it's, it's got this wonderful custardy thing about it, you know, which is, of course, with the eggs and the milk. But because you use that really strong, dark chocolate, non sweetened chocolate, it just has an intense chocolate flavor. And I'm going to use another spoon, so I'll, in case I share this with anybody. And have another bite, and you see little bits of bread still are sort of showing in it. Oh, makes it even better. Hold on. Oh gosh, and little bits of sort of chocolate are sort of showing. Can you see that? I don't know if you can or not. Anyway, you can't see it for long because it's in my mouth. Mmm. Oh, it is the best. It is the best dessert. You will wow your friends or your family or yourself. You just make a huge vat of it and keep eating it all by yourself. Right now it's a little bit warm and so I'm gonna have it tomorrow cold. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So thanks for joining me again on Harriet's Florida Kitchen. This is the best. Try it. Bye.